Well, I keep hoping to make the last video on the subject of this condition, and hopefully this is that one. Uh, there's been changes enough that I need to make another video. I am very well, and in the last probably 10 days I experienced a, uh, oh, a sort of a detox, uh, just a lot of pain and tenderness in my, uh, my kidneys and apparently my liver. But I'm, I'm good now. That is over. Um, I still have a little bit of uh, topical stuff going on, but very little. Uh, the reason for this video is that I actually went and saw a doctor last week, and I wanted to talk about that experience because I think it's important. Um, anyway, my wife's been bugging me for years to go see a doctor, and I uh, had to tell her, sweetheart, I can't go to a doctor with this because I don't, I don't have anything to tell him, you know. I've already been to a doctor for this. I know what happens. Uh, it's happened to, you know, countless thousands of other people. You go in with this skin condition and, you know, you have to communicate with your, your doctor to be treated. And you start telling him about this stuff and he goes, mm, you're out of your mind. Get out of my office. That's what happens, right? You can read a million instances of it where people experience this. And uh, anyway, you know, all of these videos really are not geared towards anyone except the people who have experienced this condition you know it's it's such a puzzle that people outside of this Morgellons community are not gonna get it you know and that's why I have to make these uh, these videos uh, because I figured it out I honestly have figured it out and um, I can't just walk away I have to I have to tell you you know what I know and you know I've had people contact me saying you're just trying to get video views on your channel. Well, no, I'm not. You really think I want to be known as the guy who's crazy because he has that thing from the internet? And to be honest, uh, these videos are wrecking this channel. But if that's the cost of helping even one person, I'm good with it, you know, because I know how devastating this is. Anyway, all of that said, I want to see this doctor. Bear with me. I'm very casual today. Anyway, I go to see this doctor. Um, I've never seen him before as a patient, but I've sat there while he treated my wife before several times, and I knew he was a very good doctor. Um, he runs a local clinic, and he, he's not doing it to get rich. He's doing it because he cares about people. This is a very old Chinese man, somewhere between 70 and 90. I can never quite decide. Uh, but he's very no-nonsense, and, you know, you go in, you get like a 15-minute window, and he's going to either fix you, or he's going to figure out that you're full of crap and he's going to run you off, right? So I've actually heard him do that to people that were in there trying to con him out of drugs. It's hilarious. Anyway, this guy's a good doctor. So I'm fairly confident going in there. But I tell you, I couldn't sleep the night before going to see a doctor, you know. Uh, last time I saw one, I was 40. And he basically didn't even examine me and ran me out of his office, you know. And uh, so, anyway, I tried to kind of go, how am I going to approach this with this guy, you know? And so I go in and I sit down and I'm in the room with my wife sitting next to me and the doctor comes in and he says, uh, what can I do for you? And I said, I have a topical fungal infection. He said, let me see. So I pulled up my shins. I didn't want to show him my arm because you know, I didn't want to explain all this white scarring and stuff. I didn't want to explain that I've been experimenting on myself, you know, I've been doing medical experiments for over 10 years to figure this out. Anyway, so I pull up my shins. I show him my shins. I pull up my sweatpants to show him my shins. And he just kind of leans in, leans out. He kind of lost my train of thought there. Sorry, I haven't been in front of a camera in a long time. Uh, I hate making these videos. I hate this subject matter. I will be glad to be done with it. But like I said, i got to do this because I know. Anyway doctor leans in, looks at my shins, and he leans back out, and he says, uh, have you seen a doctor for this condition before? And I said, well, yes, I've uh, seen a uh, doctor when I was about 40. I'm 53 now. And uh, I showed him the condition, and he basically did not examine me and ran me out of his office as a DOP patient. He said, DOP? I said, delusions of parasitosis. And he said, ah. And he goes, how do you know it's fungal? And I said, well, I uh, 
was left to figure this out on my own for you know over 10 years you know and I've uh, I've had to figure it out and uh, it's uh, what we're looking at is the after effects of uh, sporotrichosis and he said how do you know it's sporotrichosis and I said well I was uh, basically just about at the point of laying down to just let this stuff finish killing me and one of my nieces said uh, hey you know uh, that sounds like it could be a strain of sporo, sporotrichosis and kind of got me going down that vein and uh, so I treated with uh, potassium iodide, a saturated solution of potassium iodide and he said what? I've never written potassium iodide and I said well if it were not sporo it would not have responded to the potassium iodide and he uh, jumped out of his chair and he goes, I got to go look up sporotrichosis. And he ran out of the room. And he came back a couple minutes later carrying a couple of big books. So he comes back in carrying these books. He comes back in carrying these books and he opens it up and he reads the paragraph that, you know, I've been encouraging you to read about uh, using uh, potassium iodide, a saturated solution of potassium iodide. Uh, in dermatology, you know, for treating sporo. Anyway, he reads that and he goes, well, I guess since you self-diagnosed and self-treated, we can talk. And uh, that made me feel pretty good for a minute. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, you know, the problem with medicine, he goes, it's all poison. He goes, uh, and people are all different. He's, some people can take a lot of poison, some can only take a little, and he goes, when scientists are uh, developing drugs, they have to try to find the middle road there, and he goes, and then maybe a couple people die, and then their family sues, and it, you know, he says, it, there's fewer and fewer medicines available to me to help people all the time. And then the, uh, the regulation, he goes, constantly tighter and tighter regulation for dealing with uh, patients, you know. He said, I can't treat anything unless I can point to it in the book and then point to the other book to show the treatment for it and then I can treat you for that. Because if I can't do this and I treat you anyway, then I'm open for liability. I'm basically, uh, it's considered basically I'm experimenting on people and that's not allowed. You know, it's, I could get sued out of business, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. I follow you, and you know I get that, uh, you know, and that's kind of the problem we're running into uh, with this unique condition. Is you go to a doctor and he can't point to it in a book, you know. So it's like ah oh, crap, you know. So you get run off. Anyway, so I got that, you know, and uh, I'm gonna roll a cigarette and take a quick break. So anyway, he's very comfortable with me at this point. He's actually leaning back in his chair and he's got his arms up. And because he's talking to, you know, a guy that just did it old school, you know, and he said he was pretty comfortable with me about that. I came in and he learned something from me, you know, and tried to teach something to a 70 to 90 year old man. Huh? Anyway, he said, you know, this, this reminds me of that thing, you know, that, or it makes me think about that thing that people keep coming in with. Uh, it starts with an M. And my wife and I both said Morgellons at the same time. He looked at us, and I said, uh, "This this condition that I have, it is that condition." And uh, he said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." And uh, I said, "The uh, the complaints that people are going to have about this, um, they're going to be talking about pulling things out of their skin. Uh, some people might describe worms." And uh, I said, "What what these things resemble?" is a maggot as far as color, shape, and uh, you know, general size. And he said, maggots. And I said, it's just a fungal growth, but initially that, you know, that's what one of these resembles. And I said, there will also be individual fibers of various colors, uh, and there will be fibrous masses. And he said, okay. He said, what do you want me to do for you? And I said, well, I, uh, I need some help getting rid of this topical infection. And another one of the reasons that I went to him was I wanted to answer this question right here. Is can the topical infection reinfect me internally? And the answer was no, by the way. 
And uh, he said, well, I can uh, prescribe an antifungal cream. And I said, great, because that's what I was there for. And he said, I'd also like to give you some hydrocortisone because your skin is very tore up after all of this. And I said, fantastic. He said that the uh, hydrocortisone cream will help to, you know, smooth my skin back out. He said, it's very rough and broken up. And it is, believe me, my shins. Uh, and then I said, is there anything that you can give me to take internally to finish this, this uh, potassium iodide treatment? And he said, well, you know, because now we're crossing the line here uh, between a, a topical cream, which, you know, and he saw it, he can go, yeah, it's fungal, and he can give me that cream, but now we're talking about something internal, and he had to think about that for a minute, you know, he's like, how serious is this cat, you know, and uh, he said, I can give you two weeks worth of Lamisil, uh, which is a very strong antifungal, he said, that's not enough of it to hurt you, and I went, okay, good enough, you know, and then he said, I've got to cut this short, because we'd already been going half an hour, you know, because it was, it was a good conversation, and he was taking me very seriously until we got to the workout and stuff. And what that tells me is that under no circumstances, I mean, it really confirms it for me, because I, I trust this doctor, I know that he knows his business, he's been doing it for 50 years, but what I know I mean, I know in my heart now is that under no circumstances should things be coming out of our skin, yet they are. But you can't tell a doctor that because it does not happen, okay? And it really drove that home for me. And that's really the nuts of this issue is it, it defies uh, you know, medical logic. Let me go deal with my dog real quick. And I guess I need to backtrack just a little bit, because he went more into the Morgellons thing. He said, the problem with this Morgellons thing, he said, is that unknown doctors, doctors who are not known to write, are writing about it. And they're writing outlandish things. Okay? And that speaks volumes to me also, because they're not writing outlandish things. They're writing things that seem outlandish medically. Because... You know, it's the whole nut of this thing of it doesn't exist, but it exists. It doesn't make good medical sense. And that kind of drives home the point for me that, you know, something very odd has gone on. Anyway, he, uh, he jumps up, says he's going to uh, write me these prescriptions, and then kind of under his breath he said, he didn't even look at me. He just said it walking by. He goes, this is the last I'm going to be able to help you with this issue. And he walked out and he had somebody walk in and hand, hand uh, me the prescriptions. And, you know, I get it. It, it all, I've been kind of just soaking it in, you know, thinking about that and, and what happened. And, uh, I don't know. I've got more thoughts on this, but that was my doctor visit. And uh, I kind of want to get a lot of stuff off my chest about this whole thing and then be done with it myself unless you know something else happens like uh, doubtfully my health could take a turn for the worse but I honestly I do not think so uh, or it, anyway if anything important happens I will make another video about this subject but otherwise I am gone baby I'm just doing this to help people that I know are uh, dealing with it and what I would like to do is uh, make a suggestion for being treated by a physician because I absolutely do not suggest that anybody try to self-treat like I did. Uh, it's very rough and just based on the people that have contacted me they don't understand the idea of a saturated solution. They keep talking to me about things like uh, Lugol's solution. Well that's a 5% solution. Day one of a, uh, the protocol for uh, a saturated solution of potassium iodide is five drops three times a day. Well, that's a saturated solution. In order to get the same amount of potassium iodide in one drop of saturated solution would take 20 drops of Lugol's. You follow me? That stuff, ain't, it ain't even in this ballpark. All right? So, anyway, what I've uh, been thinking is, you know, all, all through this, 
Although my thinking, I have to admit, is a lot clearer now than it was when I made that first video on this a few months ago. Uh, is how, you know, how can I help people to be treated by a physician? Because that's what you need. And I think I've found a way. Uh, like I told the doctor, and he believed in me, is I treated with a saturated solution of potassium iodide. It's pretty much a litmus test for sporotrichosis. And like I told him, if it were not sporotrichosis, it would not have responded to that treatment. Good enough for him. And believe me, I'm not lying to you when I tell you. But I don't want you to do that. I, I really want you to get, you know, a, a physician's assistance with this. Um, and so what I found out on further digging <coughs> is that there is a blood test for the... Uh, the cause of sporotrichosis. It's sporoth sporothrix uh, shank shanka? I'm going to put it right here because I can't even pronounce it. And I haven't bothered to hear any professional say it so that I could, you know, copy them. Um, but there's a blood test for that. And that is like the, the base infection in the body that causes sporotrichosis. And sporotrichosis can manifest many ways in people. And I think that's what we're seeing in, uh, in people, you know, because everybody has all these different complaints. And it's known uh, scientifically that uh, sporo can respond differently based on allergies in your body and whatever. And all of that said, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what I really know about this crap after having dealt with it for so long. Um, and I don't know, I'm going to have a smoke <laughs> and a cup of coffee and then I'll finish this. But I, I just want to get this crap off my chest, the, the end of this, because uh, we're going to go into the weird part of this now, because I know weird stuff. I've been trying to keep this all very straight and legit, you know, uh, but it's not straight and legit. Yeah, you know, that's why there's so much conspiracy theory stuff about this, and <sighs> because it is, you know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to have smoke and kick back a minute. I'll be right back. So I've said, uh, you know, always <laughs> in the last 90 days or so since I uh, let the, this cat out of the bag, uh, that if you go to a doctor for, for this condition, you cannot say the word more gallons because it's an instant wall because it ain't in a book. The doctor's got nowhere to go from there. So you can't say that. Uh, what I know for sure now is that you don't want to tell a doctor that you're removing anything from your skin because uh, well that's not supposed to happen okay um, it puts you in a bad light you know he thinks you're nuts um, probably so the answer in my opinion and you know it's I'm just some dork on the internet you know so my opinions are worth but I'm not blowing smoke either here. The, uh, the thing to do is to go to a doctor and say, Doctor, I have a very tenacious fungal infection. I suspect that it is uh, sporothrix shenka, or sporotrichosis. Anyway, you can do a little bit of homework on this online and you'll find that uh, the way that they test for this typically is a topical test. But it, what they find is that uh, Shanka is in there with a whole slew of other things. So the only way that they may treat for Shanka and decide that's what it is, is uh, through interviewing you uh, to see if you've had an exposure, uh, you know, soil, rotting wood, etc., through your work or, uh, you know, recreation that could have exposed you to that. Uh, whatever they call it, that infection. And s something that I know as a fact uh, is that you can't talk to people who have this stuff, you know, because it's such a very emotional issue. And trying to hide what we know about it is difficult. Uh, but then trying to talk to someone about it factually who has zero belief in what you're saying and has, you know, a good solid background for for that opinion you know a doctor it's just so frustrating and it's 
so anyway, you're not going to get there from there. They're not going to be able to interview you and go, oh, oh, it's Shanka, or however it's pronounced. So that's why I recommend doing the best you can to have the blood test for that. Uh, because then it's conclusive. I mean, absolutely conclusive. If you know a doctor that you're on good terms with and you're fighting this condition, recommend that to them that they blood test you. For, I'll, you know, put it right here again so you can write it down. Uh, and then he can go, oh, here it is right here in the book, and he can treat you for that, okay? And like I said, I've been trying to be so straight about this and say it is sporo and, you know, and it obviously is not um, <laughs> crazy as that sounds. Uh, for whatever reason, there shouldn't be things coming out of our skin. We both know there are. So... You know, uh, there's a lot of things coming out of skin, and you know, I, I, I've, I've avoided going there because all these conspiracies and things, and you know, the sad truth is most of it is true. Um, I don't know what it is that has gone on. Um, I seriously doubt that this is some kind of a mutation in this condition through nature, and I honestly feel like this is a manufactured condition. I've, I've kind of known it in my heart for a long time, but going to that doctor and him switching me off as soon as he found out that I was able to remove things from my skin, I went, this, this doesn't happen in nature. A doctor does not know that this can happen. So it does happen. Why does it happen? Well, you know, we live with a government that has legislated itself the authority to test on us and uh, I think that ultimately you know probably 50 years down the road we're gonna get some kind of public apology for all of this um, ah, God I've been at this so long uh, I recently went to the web uh, website uh, Lime Busters I used to hang out there during the period when uh, they were doing the CDC test and then it got handed over to Kaiser, you know, this was 2006, 2007. And I knew a lot of people from there, the original morgies, as it were, you know, and I was one of them. We all kind of wound up in the Lyme community, uh, you know, looking for answers, you know. And um, a lot of those people seem to be gone. Um, the, uh, I put in a request to join uh, the Lyme Busters website, and it went unanswered. So I guess Ant Hill. Uh, was no longer around, uh, who was admin of that site. Um, or maybe they're just ignoring it, I don't know. I hope they're well. Uh, some of the other people I knew there, uh, one of them, I'm not going to give you names of these people because, you know, their privacy and these are their online names and I don't want anybody going to bug them based on anything I said. but. One of these people was the uh, patient of Dr. Staninger, who is the, uh, the doctor that has the theory regarding um, nanotechnology uh, in this stuff. And if you look around, I know not everybody is familiar with this because it's pretty old stuff. The blue hexagons, there was a few videos about those, and I know the people those chips came out of. And I actually had a blue chip myself. It came out of my right forearm. My wife was present when that happened, and I mailed it to uh, this this person that was the patient of Dr. Stanager. She was going to uh, have it examined, or you know, she actually had some equipment herself and was going to you know get some photographs of it microscopically. Anyway, the day that it was due to show up, she contacted me and she said, "You know what? I this has given me nightmares, and uh, I'm going to have to just refuse." to accept it and let, send it back to you and I said you know I understand and the thing came back to me and I didn't want any part of it either I burned it um, so there's weird going on here on top of the fact that there's sporo there's stuff going on you know that doesn't make sense outlandish claims <laughs> written about by other doctors uh, you know there's the insect aspect and I've had um, I've had my insect experiences. I actually pried a uh, live fruit fly out of my leg. 
it, I was, you know, doing my surgeries, you know, and, uh, you know, I, that became a daily part of my life, actually, was removing this stuff. I don't know what good it did or didn't do, but I suspect that uh, it not being present uh, helped keep me healthy because it simply was not present in my body. Not that I recommend anyone do that. It's just, it's just grueling. Uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't stand for it to be there. Anything I could get a hold of, I got rid of. Uh, anyway, I was uh, doing my procedures, and I saw a black, maybe I had a blackhead in my thigh. So I just reached down because I'm wicked with a needle at this point, needle and tweezers. I, I can, psh. anyway. So I got this black dot on the end of the needle. I check it under my magnifier, and I watch this fruit fly unfold. And I'm not, I'm not even joking. I saw that happen. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't even talk about this stuff except I'm down the road, you know, I'm past this. And the only reason I'm sharing this stuff is because I know this is happening to other people. And I just want them to know that you're not alone, you know. And if you can get that blood test, I think that if, if your worst conspiracy theory about this is true, then they had to, if this was created, they had to start with something, all right? Something that works within the body. Shank, that's your thing. And I, by treating it, I beat it. Um, anyway, I also, uh, uh, my right shin, I pulled out a thing that looked like a, uh, a malformed beetle. And I mean, this stuff just straight, flipped me out. It's been years ago since since the beetle. It was probably, oh, eight years ago. And the fruit fly was probably three years ago. And I mean, this it just flipped me smooth out. It's like, man, there's no hope. If this is happening, there is just no damned hope, you know. And I guess speaking of no hope, uh, I was talking about the Lion Buster site, and I wanted to uh, get back into that forum just so I could write about what I found out, help anyone uh, there, uh, but like I said, they, they, uh, they're not accepting anybody. I don't know what's going on over there, uh, if it's just in free fall or what, but uh, no hope is why I quit being there. Uh, I experienced the time when CDC, we were waiting and waiting and waiting for an answer from them, you know, me and all these other people that were uh, experiencing this condition. And then, big disappointment when they handed it over to uh, Kaiser Permanente. And then, when Kaiser uh, basically said, oh, nothing here, we were like, oh my God, you know, really without hope. And that's when I kind of just left that community because the, uh, there wasn't any good going to come from that, you know. Uh, not only are there people in this community that are legitimately stricken with this thing, but it's like a magnet for crazy, and uh, there's a lot of paranoid people coming around and stuff. I, was, I actually got attacked for uh, my screen name, The Unknown Cat. It's like, who are you, man? It's like, well, I'm, you know. So, dude, I've been the unknown cat online for a long time, you know, before this YouTube channel. And, uh, dog's barking again. The, uh, Sam? I'll be right back. Uh, somebody's riding a bicycle down the street with a loose dog. My dogs just love that. Anyway, this, uh, thing with Kaiser Permanente, you know, that's another big clue right there. One of, one of two things happened. Either it's all some kind of cover-up uh, because you don't bring in a test group of people with this condition and not find anything, believe me. Uh, or they got all, all crazy people who didn't actually have it. They're just, you know, the crazies that are in this mix, admittedly. Um, so, you know, I think that's a big clue there. They sure, surely did not get just an entire test group of mentally ill people who did not actually have any manifestation of this fungal thing or whatever it is. But anyway, uh, I just kind of wanted to get that off my chest. I mean, 
all the crazy that you can see about this stuff and the pictures online and everything, you know, are, uh, it's all real. And speaking of pictures online, if you have this condition, I suggest uh, doing a Google image search on Sporthrix uh, Shanka. Uh, it will bring up just an array of pictures, um, just totally different infections, all based on this thing. Uh, apparently Brazil is just covered up in it. They're attributing it to uh, infection from cats. Uh, I have no idea whether they... Well, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Hell, I don't know. But the reason I would encourage you to look at those pictures is just to compare your own condition. Because you look through there and you go, oh, I've seen that one before, you know. And it, it might just help to make you see that, you know, this is likely the root cause of this. And then whatever it is that has gone on beyond it shit, I don't know, man. It's a nightmare. Uh, but I'm done. I just wanted to, you know, I gotta tell, you know. So, I have. And unless something else happens, I ain't coming back to this, you know. Although I would like to hear from anybody who successfully treats. Man, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I also gotta give a shout out to <laughs> my buddy Pat from, I think, Detroit. Is that where you're from, buddy? Anyway, he's he's been dealing with this thing, and he's actually uh, he's managing to see uh, some infectious disease specialists uh, at some universities and some things like that. Anyway, I just try to give him some moral support, you know, because I'm not a doctor, I can't treat him either, you know. So I just hanging out with him while he goes through this. He's in, he's uh, he's tougher than nails, man. Like everybody who is surviving this crap is. Uh, you know, uh, I think survival really depends on how good your immune system is. And mine can eat nails, and that's why I'm still here. Uh, people with a compromised immune system are probably just dead. I'm going to have to find a place to clip this in. Sorry, uh, this is all just an impromptu video without any production value. But I uh, had somebody complaining about, hey, you didn't show us your arm, man. Well, I'm going to show you my arm. And the reason I want to do that is, uh, uh, well, that's how deep I had to go to clean this thing out. And I don't think that cleaning these out is necessary once you're under treatment, you know. Um, the, uh, I think your body, body will absorb it all right. Although I got to tell you that the last 10 days was pretty rough, you know, on my organs because I was uh, dealing with endotoxins is my guess as in not a doctor. Uh, anyway, um, what is interesting about this hole in my arm is that that's where I found that uh, hydra formation was in the bottom of that. And the reason that's interesting is that there shouldn't be any hydras, fungal hydras in mammals. Okay, Just another clue for you there. Uh, because I don't know. I don't know what it's doing there, but I promise you that's what I saw. And in some of the uh, photographs of hair follicles that I showed in previous videos, you can see budding off of them. I didn't realize what it was, but that's how hydras form, is by budding. And you can, with that in mind, if you go back and look at those other videos, you'll see the hair follicle photos. And there's one in particular with a, a thing sticking off the side with this little puff on top. And I think that is actually a... Uh, hydra forming off of a hair follicle. Just my guess. And I also wanted to add this. Um, you know, I said I didn't show my arm to the doctor because I didn't want to explain the white scarring from when I froze all this off and all of that. And uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to see him though was because I could not get this hole to heal up. It was very slow healing. Uh, you know, it was open for weeks and weeks. Uh, removing this stuff and it's like it grows back as fast as you take it out that's why I don't really recommend cutting into yourself and trying to remove all this stuff and all that crap I think that properly treated it'll take care of itself and then you know there might be a few things to lance out at the end who knows but I did uh, but uh, the reason I I say that is I made an appointment or decided I was gonna go there's no appointments at this clinic that's walk-in uh, but the day before I went, I, uh, I put some uh, turmeric on the hole in my arm. And um, 
I, I used a different kind than my wife had actually been making this paste for me and set it up and it was this very dark turmeric and I had pretty good results with that. But anyway, the day before I made my own and I used this particular turmeric right here. It's called Simply Organic, okay? And so I put this on this horrible hole in my arm and I left it there and that was another reason I didn't want to show my arm to the doctor is because I didn't want to explain the orange spot either, you know, here I'm some retard at home putting turmeric on open wounds and crap, right? But anyway, I went to the doctor and then I come home, I'm like, yeah, I didn't have to show him my nasty arm. And the scab peeled away and it was like the hole was gone. Uh, and so this particular turmeric, simply organic, may actually give you some relief uh, if you're dealing with this condition. It's not going to cure you or anything, but a paste of it, you know, a little bit of water, make a nice dry paste and just put it on these open lesions or, you know, closed lesions, whatever, uh, it could give you some relief. It's not going to be a cure by any means because this is systemic and you have to be treated internally, but it might at least find you some relief from that. And I just wanted to add that. And I wanted to show my nasty arm to the guy that said, hey, you didn't even show us your armhole. And I'll throw in a picture of my shins here for you too. Anyway, uh, this is my whole morgy story. This ought to be the end of this. I feel like a million bucks. Uh, I'm gathering pieces to uh, start working on this truck uh, because I need something to get excited about. And I love junk vehicles. You know I'm a junk man. So uh, I'm going to get excited about working on this truck. It's not too physically demanding, but it'll give me something to be excited about and go, uh, go get moving around. And that's what that's about. And I'm going to do a video series on that. Uh, and then we'll just have to go from there. But anyway, if you're dealing with this crap, God bless you, you know. Uh, I just want you to know that you're not the only one, you know. And there's hope, but it's all about getting that blood test if you can, I think. Because it worked for me. Good luck.